please uh, join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. V. Tyagarajan, the Managing Director of Blue Star Limited in conversation with Ruhel Amin, a Senior Editor, Exchange for Media, on the topic, Blue Star Built on Trust. With this, I'd like to humbly welcome uh, Mr. V. Tyagarajan. Thank you so much for your valuable time. And of course, Ruhel, it's so great to have you back on the screen. And I'm sure this conversation is going to be really good. We look forward to the nuggets of wisdom being shared now on the screen. Over to you, Ruhel, to take it forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bhavna. And uh, thank you, Mr. Tyagarajan. Uh, for joining us really thrilled to be uh, doing this session and this uh, conversation with you i just want to put a small context before i start my first question you know in a world where thanks to technology clients have more choice than ever before conversely choosing a product or service has become a lot more challenging you know buyers are certainly willing to put in the research but what everyone really wants is a shorthand, a shortcut, something to make those decisions faster and easier. And that's where the trust factor comes in. And of course, your brand has done it very well. I mean, it's, an, it's a research in itself, you know, to understand how you have built trust over the years. And my first question, uh, Mr. Thyagarajan, is also your tagline for uh, Blue Star is, uh, you know, built on trust. Give, give our uh, viewers a sense of how important has this trust factor been for building brand salience. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'll begin by uh, complimenting Exchange for Media Group and the entire marketing fraternity for giving me an opportunity. This is a very important event. I don't think in marketing uh, we have a larger event than this. Uh, many youngsters look forward to that. And over the years, how you have reinvented yourself in this particular format is indeed uh, impressive. Uh, I am very grateful and privileged to talk to you. Um, the, I, I also would like to begin this by, you know, in, in uh, one of the posters here, I have got uh, Mahatma Gandhi's quote. Um, but till today, I wasn't aware that uh, this has got something to do with uh, our brand itself. Uh, okay, yeah, it, it, was, it was lost in my many of the posters that is there. I know that is there. The quote is, uh, I believe in trusting. This is Mahatma Gandhi. I believe in trusting. Trust begets trust. Suspicious is quoted and only stings. He who trusts has never lost in the world. That is his quote. And uh, it is remarkable that he had figured that out many decades ago. Now, uh, Blue Star was not a B2C brand. It was a B2B brand. We were in central air conditioning and commercial refrigeration to begin with. So if you look at before 90s, we believed in leadership. Uh, so he, while communicating to the audience, it was like that. that we are leaders in central air conditioning. That is how the, our brand building activity began. But prior to that, it was all in actions. The, the founder, Monty Adwani, subsequently, uh, Mr. Sunil Adwani, Mr. Ashok Adwani, they all believed in one particular uh, element of the values and beliefs is that putting company's interest ahead of the personal ones. And in that context, actually putting the customer's interest first. They were not interested in may, you know, enhancing their profits or seeking glory by, uh, by proclaiming something what they cannot deliver. In the founder's own words, that I take pride in getting the job done well. So this was the beginning of that journey that we, we all took pride in getting the job done well. So within Blue Star, even, you know, I joined Blue Star only in 1998. And from that on, I have seen that the question is that what you want to promise to the customer, please promise what you can deliver. This is the first principle. The second principle is that even today, uh, Mr. Sunil Adwani and Mr. Ashok Adwani will ask, look, you stated this in the media, are you sure you will deliver? They, they, every interview, they will, if they pick up something that I have promised, they will be picking up the phone or send a WhatsApp message, or are you sure you will deliver? That is very important to them. So this whole thing is also the credo of Blue Star, that I am Blue Star. 
I take pride in delivering a world-class customer experience. So I empower the people and ensure that you are able to deliver what you promise. This is where the journey began. Now, we went on to migrate to a different communication that we are customer-focused professionals. That was in the year 2001. So that translate, translated into Blue Star Brief Easy, where you are in the hands of the experts. And if you give something to Blue Star, you can relax. That is how that brand was built. Then we migrated to that if I am working with a customer, if a customer has trusted me, I should benefit him. So that migrated into another value proposition. This was from 2003 onwards, where we said that cooling solutions to help your business do better. So therefore, in designing a cooling solution, every business, whether it's IT or retail or healthcare or hotel, every customer segment, we started building competence or the domain knowledge there so that my solutions will help them do the business better, whether it is air conditioning or refrigeration. We got into the residential space. Now, multinationals came in and we were new to B2C space. We went ahead and migrated the same strength we had in the B2B part into take office like cooling home, which means that superior air conditioning solution I will deliver for a residence itself. Now, when these businesses were growing, we also got into other businesses like MEP, where plumbing, electrical. There is one professional electronics business in which we are leaders in certain segments like uh, the data security solutions and all. So we wanted one common thing which defines Blue Star. That the consumer insight uh, studies across, whether it's a focus group discussion or individual discussions, it revealed that it is the trust which is helping Blue Star to shine, even in the highly competitive environment, multinationals had come in and we are dealing in high tech products. So therefore, we went ahead and said three, four years ago it was that Blue Star built on trust will be the proposition. It is the overarching value proposition that comes from Blue Star. That is how the journey began. Right. Well, absolutely. I think. Uh... It's a fair amount of, you know, it takes time to set up those expectations and then constantly deliver on that. I mean, that's the critical point of building that trust where Blue Star has done exceedingly well. So I also want to understand that in today's digital world, you know, where the memory span is short, it's, it's in seconds, I guess, you know, we're hopping from one platform to another. You know, a major factor, uh, you know, is uh, retaining that, uh, you know, the customer mind share, for example. Give me a sense of what are the bigger challenges in sustaining brand trust in such a context where people are just having a two or a five second attention span for a legacy brand such as yours. Uh, yeah, very pertinent question, and I think it is a challenge which we are continuing to deal with. I, I will tell you, it is, it is not only uh, the advertising or promotion part of it. E-commerce is another element where I suspect in uh, before clicking buy or add to the cart, anybody is paying attention because I have a complaint. E-commerce drives this L1 lowest price. So that is another challenge. I don't mind accepting that. Now, uh, the, what we have figured out is that, uh, A, your communication has to be consistent, that uh, any uh, marketing person will be aware, and you should, you should be consistent in communicating with the team. You should be consistent in delivery. Now, the second part of it is your communication will have to be clutter-breaking, and your communication will have to be delivered in an authentic manner, and you should live up to that communication. So let us say a room air conditioner. If we are saying that nobody cools better, and at the end of the day, if the customer has bought it, and whether we are living up to that promise, and we have said that built on trust, which means the delivery time that I promised I am fulfilling, and the product is reliable, and the, it conforms to certain energy efficiency and other regulatory requirements that I have fulfilled that, and he is fully looked after during the life cycle of the product. That has to be demonstrated outside. Now, in, in, uh, in 
communication you have seen that we we felt that we need definitely a brand ambassador we brought in virat kohli and uh, that he he yeah, yeah, an element where the people can connect with him given the fact that uh, the 65 to 70% of our customers are from tier 3 4 5 towns and we find that most of them are first time buyers of air conditioner and we uh, and in that context we felt that we need a yeah, brand ambassador also in uh, to add to our communication and bring in some element of humor so that you will be able to break the clutter now in the recent years we have learned that look you are uh, i i i am i am feeling that this 30 40 second tv commercial days are over it's are all becoming some 10 second that is the future in which we are living yeah so the uh, the the thing is we have figured out that uh, our we are doing well in terms of the skippable ads in uh, in uh, uh, digital medium that the people are not uh, skipping that we get very high scores people going through the ad fully so that challenge has been overcome we believe it is in terms of simple communication consistent communication clutter breaking communication with some kind of humor this is one part of it the second part of it in in a b2b part of the business this has to be built in multiple ways that we 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 invest substantial amount of money in creating uh, content for the people to consume in terms of knowledge so there are quite a few like you will find blue star guide to hospital air conditioning blue star guide to air conditioning of educational institutions and there are so many webinar webinars that are being done so therefore there the you you don't have this problem you will be in a position to get the captive audience for you to communicate adequately right i oh, mr uh, yeah. dealer showroom you we are again uh the in shop demonstrators or the dealers who are doing it the communication is created in such a manner one or two aspects of it which are highly differentiated or communicated to the um customers or the potential customers who are walking in right right um uh, mr thyagraj you raised a very valid point of clutter breaking communication and you also stated how humor you know has been a cornerstone if i may call it of all your marketing communi- most of your marketing communication here i want to understand uh, the brand ethos when it comes to marketing and the role of innovation how do you ensure that you know you have the you've got the pulse right and the communication targeted that nobody is pressing the skip skip button Yeah, say, say for example, you. I know very well that most customers are looking for uh, cooling, uh, you know, when buying an air conditioner. So you need to constantly invest in the consumer insights. Uh, this, uh, and in India, you cannot look at it as one market. You have to look at uh, north, or south, within north, different markets. Like Punjab behaves differently than NCR, so on and so forth. So number one is that invest in. uh getting the consumer insights right this is very very important element the second part of it is we know very well that the people are buying for just cooling that's what the air conditioner does within that what is that particular element which can resonate with the consumers at some point of a time we had discovered this the the consumers are Are, are you know like the blue star brand has to be seen in the concept in the context of many multinationals present day so therefore we we were we were trying to create a communication where this product is world class it is the most innovative one so if you look at the history we were the first one to come out with decimal cooling like if you want 24.5 degree centigrade 23.5 degree centigrade you can set it in the air conditioner so some point of a time the communication was that the second part of the communication was that the powerful cooling that it can handle multiple people there so therefore that the the communication also if you if you recollect the virat kohli and the look alike so that communication in order to make it humor make it interesting we brought in look alike sir virat kohli to say that 
multi, many people walking into the room also the air conditioner can deliver its capacity now the uh, now we understood that right now when you when your market share has grown you are addressing large audience and you are addressing bottom of the pyramid you we, we, we need to go ahead and communicate it is the fast cooling the the people want to switch on the ac and immediately it should start cooling so one end you develop a product according to that value value proposition then go ahead and deliver that through a communication say for example uh, we have just uh, launched another campaign which will be playing in the ipl and the other um, uh, channels the uh, like like virat kohli is snapping his fingers and he says that this is this this is a advertisement which is a very fast one and it is going to end and it is for a fast cooling ac and before somebody can click, click the skip button the ad will be over mm-hmm. that that is how it is created there wow, so therefore that's... you have to figure out a product feature which will be appealing and relevant to the consumer through consumer insight convert it into a communication and figure out a human element there right right absolutely that's what great company is all about so if we look at your last year's results you know uh, revenue surpassed pre pandemic levels you know and uh, we are also at the start of the peak season for uh, ac cooling sales uh, how are you looking to close the year uh, the uh, q3 results uh, is in the public domain uh, we grew faster than the market we improved our market share and we uh, we find the demand uh, sustaining over january february march itself now the forthcoming summer season will be uh, after two summer seasons having got washed out uh, 2020 summer as well as 2021 summer so the build up to the summer season the primary sales as well as the secondary sales are good now uh, we are on a pursuit to improve our market share by 2024 to 15% which is somewhere around 13.25% now we will improve it to 14 in the coming year we will improve it to 15 now uh, the the whole growth story is happening despite uh, disproportionate uh, or unprecedented price increase due to commodities as we are speaking now every day the Uh, some element of the cost is going up now the uh, i think the the growth is happening because of the penetration levels and the severity of summer and the other element is that people are spending more time at home and they are going ahead and equipping themselves air conditioner as a category is uh, the, the penetration level is just 7% and i think next to 4 to 5 years this will rapidly grow and it is it is in that particular stage as it had happened for refrigerators or washing machines at some point of time so if you want to look at one category that will rapidly grow it will be air conditioners now uh, the uh, what we are trying to do therefore in order to grow our market share to that 15% it is important for us to address the belly of market therefore make the product more affordable therefore the entire product uh, range has been rejigged completely so we there is some element of cost increase due to commodities but at the same time through design innovation we have made the products affordable so one hopes that uh, this summer season is is, a, is an exciting one after two years of wash out right i want to come to this commodity price that you uh, raised you know in your response so, you know we have seen uh, an increase as high as 30% you know so far uh, of course blue star has not uh, passed this cost to its consumers but i are, are we likely to see an increase in price if it stays the same way blue star has passed on to the consumers i you know my board will sack me if uh, if you if you are saying we have not passed on the price increase was on march 1 2021 again in july 1 2021 again in october 2021 so there were three price increases now we were the first one to do in the market 
and there was huge resistance you can imagine it's a, a year of pandemic and you are coming out of wave 2 and the market is opening up and the prices are going up when people are trying to buy so the, if you look at our q3 results despite three price increases and unprecedented increase not only commodity prices it's also the ocean freight uh, cost uh, you 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 will notice that uh, the the margin eroded by 150 basis points or 1.5 percent it eroded by q3 now our stated objective was that by in the, the Q4, we will maintain the same margin levels as Q3. So we had no intention to increase the prices during this quarter. So we, we felt that what we have increased is enough because you determine your price by what the competition is doing. The uh, war and the uh, sanctions have led to uh, in, the, in the speculative market, metals are being booked at very high prices. And uh, we know the supply chain disruptions will be a real challenge to face. Therefore, as against our original statement that we will revise the prices by middle of April, in fact, we have taken a decision to revise in the April first week itself. Right, right, right. And, and uh, with, with, a, with a promise again, the, I'm connecting it with the trust. Yay. Right. This trust element is not uh, to not only for the consumers, right? That we need to display this uh, and demonstrate it across the value chain, whether it is our principals, whether there are vendors or business associates, dealers, and most importantly, the shareholders. So whenever the commodity prices have gone up, you, you can look at the record that I would have been the first person to disclose to the market that there is a price increase and we are going to increase the price. We, we have maintained that consistently, this transparency. To the dealers, we have maintained that transparency, that I need to increase the price, this is what we are going to do. Same way, even last week I have stated this, this price increase which is going to take place in April is because of the war, conflict. Now we will monitor this, if the prices soften, we will revise it downwards. That is where you demonstrate the trust to your trade as well. Right. right. You know, um, so we're also in the midst of a heat wave in many parts of the country. And uh, the focus uh, for Blue Star has shifted to tier three, four towns in India as well. Do you think uh, small towns in rural India uh, will be the big drivers for growth now on? It had been for uh, for the past three years that steadily uh, the share of business for Blue Star increasing now 65% of the sales coming from tier three, four, five markets. So if you look at a dealer award ceremony, the, the um, dealers who win the awards will be from small towns. That is what, that is another indicator. The, uh, there is another in, one another indicator is they are all first time buyers. The consumer finance scheme, uh, close to forty five percent of the consumers are buying through that zero percent uh, finance scheme. So it is very clear. I, I I am of the opinion not only in this category in most categories that uh, the growth is going to be driven by aspirational middle class. Growth is going to be driven by tire three, four, five towns in case of B2C. Growth is, will be driven by MSMEs in case of B2B. So the, the, I, 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 I think the marketeers should keep in mind uh, this particular factor in deciding their marketing strategy or the marketing communication strategy. Right. So when it comes to your brand, there's another observation, which is that uh, the brand strategy of mass premium with the proposition of affordable yet best in class differentiated ACs has seen, uh, you know, product expansion, right? Particularly in the affordable category. So uh, what is the next, uh, if I may say, so product expansion, uh, you know, uh, in the pipeline on this front? Are there any more? Uh, could you please share some of those details with us? But if you want, uh, we have figured out in markets such as Punjab or uh, basically uh, Uttar Pradesh, 
and uh, no, not in Delhi in general. The, they are looking for heavy duty AC. So therefore, uh, we are launching quite a few models which are heavy duty in nature, in the sense that even at 55 degrees centigrade, without derating. So what happens in air conditioner is when the ambient temperature goes up, it delivers uh, lesser capacity. It gets derated. But at 55 degrees centigrade, it can deliver full capacity. This is one particular area which we are covering in our product range. The second one is with regard to the uh, energy label change. Once in two years, the energy label changes. Like what is five star today, post the energy label will come a, will come a four star or three star. So the next energy label change is going to be on 1st July 2022. So consumer buying now before the summer, uh, he may buy a five star, he should not wonder that the post um, 1st July it has, uh, it has become four star like that. Yeah, because in the perception, the energy label uh, norms have changed. So therefore, we are launching quite a few products which are future ready. So the, right. that is taken into account, that, that is being done. The uh, next one is with regard to the, if when you are moving to tire three, four, five towns, it should withstand the voltage fluctuations. Of course, the power quality is improving. So why somebody should spend some 40, uh, 4,000 rupees uh, or 3,000 rupees for a voltage stabilizer? And therefore, the products are being redesigned for handling a very wide range of something like 155 volts to 270 volts, that voltage fluctuation. That is the next part of it. Take the elite urban customers like uh, Delhi, Mumbai, where they are concerned about uh, purif purified air or virus protection. The air conditioners, uh, there are certain, uh, there are quite a few models which will eliminate the air purifier. It has got an inbuilt air purifier. Right. Then we are finding that the average age of a buyer over the years are coming down. You know, that uh, in the 80s, uh, the average age would have been some 50 plus. Today, the average age of a buyer has come down to 30 to 35. And which means a lot of youngsters are also decision takers, both male and female. And uh, for them, the technology is important. Say, for example, Wi-Fi ready air conditioners. Or, so therefore, the technology element is also being brought in. Right, right. Please go on, yes. You want to add to it? So, so therefore, um, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, go ahead with uh, the consumer insight studies and they keep on uh, introducing products relevant to the consumers. Right. At the same time, make it affordable. This is our uh, philosophy and the direction. Great. So I have a couple of more questions. You know, one is while we are at this point of uh, expanding, you know, into what is lined up on the product front, you know. While uh, the, the cooling segment is a major contributor for you, what is the uptick seen for air purifiers and also commercial refrigeration cold storages uh, so far? Uh, air purifier is not a happy story. Some of the market size continues to be uh, 200 to 250 crore. Uh, you know that there is a lot of noise for about two, three weeks. Uh, post Diwali, some stubble burning, and uh, it will be all over the news. And once that is over, everybody forgets about the purified air. So that's why we felt that we should go ahead and integrate air purifiers with the air conditioner. That is the direction we are taking. Now, commercial refrigeration, we are the leaders. We, uh, you know, uh, A, in terms of range, it starts with some bottle water dispenser or a water cooler here freezer or a bottle cooler or cold storage solution for any commodity, whether it is an ice cream or a fruit or vegetable or meat or floriculture, floriculture, everything that we have got. And uh, we are uh, investing heavily in that area and uh, India in the, India will grow in that space as well. In uh, For your information, in quite a few markets, the commercial refrigeration market size will be higher than air conditioning. You, you take Europe or United States. Uh, in India, it is still in its infancy state. Uh, the Blue Star's own uh, growth story, the next to air conditioning, it will come from commercial refrigeration. 
lot of investments are going on in that area. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, focus on sustainability, you know, social initiatives, uh, and, and and of course, uh, brands, you know, leading brands like yours are playing a huge role in it. Uh, give me a little bit of uh, some insights into what all is happening in that uh, regard at uh, at your brand. I would not like to burden the audience with uh, taking stuff, but in a, in a very simple language, uh, you know, the, this uh, this air conditioner as a product is highly regulated. It is regulated more than cigarettes, for example. And number one, the GST is. 28%, okay, number one. It is still seen as a luxury. The second part is there is an energy labeling program. Every two years, the energy efficiency norms are uh, increased. Now, India will be one of the countries uh, insisting on very high energy efficiency norms, okay? Blue Star has been ahead of the curve. And we have been always ready. I told you that future ready products are being launched now. And right. we are even aware that what will be the next energy level will change after a couple of years and we have gone ahead and invested there. The next part is connected with global warming and ozone depletion. So ozone depletion, the industry has met with and everyone has migrated to other refrigerants. But the problem is the ozone friendly refrigerant will cause global warming. So therefore, everyone have moved to low GWT. The next phase is to move towards zero GWT. So Blue Star is ready. It is investing there. There is an e-waste program, and you are supposed to comply with that. And we are going ahead and ensuring that we are the, one of the top compliant companies in terms of e-waste management and in terms of recycling as well. In case of uh, B2B businesses, we do hell a lot of uh, refurbishment and uh, revamping of the existing system so that the life of an equipment like a chiller is increased by at least three, four, five years, depending on the condition. So people can, like in a Western country in six, seven years, they will replace. We, uh, we as a responsible player, ensure that the customer can use it for 10 to 12 years of time in a commercial air condition. Now, the like electric vehicles, is the answer to the automobile. The yeah, breakthrough technology is not yet available in the world for uh, air conditioner. We believe at some point of a time that will come. So within Blue Star, one team is working on that, what that could be. And uh, you won't believe just this afternoon, uh, our chairman Emeritus mentioned that given the fact that India is a poor country, many people cannot afford to be investing in some research and development for creating affordable solutions. That is, it, it is not an air conditioner, it is not a fan. Somewhere in between, everybody can, given the summer conditions and uh, the, their affordability. So our innovation programs are geared and confined to these, or takes into account the sustainability requirements as well. Right, right. Thank you, Mr. Thyagarajan. Uh, we, of course, have uh, more questions, but then we're out of time. But really, uh, so thank you very much for taking out time and joining us on this and sharing the facts and the insights of what it takes to build, uh, build trust with your consumers and grow in challenging times. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I thank the media group once again for giving me this opportunity. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rohel, for curating this wonderful conversation with Mr. Vithya Anurajan. Thank you so much for your valuable time.